Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from a sunny and beautiful Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator in the United States. I have a special treat for you. The Totally Techniques Design Team has blog hop today and our technique for this month is floating elements. Oh my gosh, I love this technique. You can get some really, really beautiful ideas when you join in the blog hop. I am going to give you a sneak peek of the Bag of Bones suite of products, and I have made an adorable card. I'm super excited to share with you using this bundle. Let's flip the camera around, get started, and I'll tell you all about it and show you how easy this technique is for a spectacular card. I am so excited to be sharing this brand new bundle with you. This is coming out in our September to December new mini catalog. If you do not have one of these catalogs and you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please feel free to reach out to me. Email me at kelly at stampabove.com and I'd be happy to mail one to you if you're in the United States. We're gonna be using the Bag of Bones. I love Halloween. Everybody that knows me knows I love Halloween. Like we go all out for Halloween. I dress up, I go trick or treating with the kids. I love to make Halloween little treats and desserts and of course cards. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. The Bag of Bones is actually one of our sweets in the mini catalog. Um, the suite comes with the stamp set with 23 images and the set of dies that has 31 different dies in here, as well as our black and white large checked, I'm sorry, black and vanilla large checked ribbon. This is really fun. I've been working with it. And of course you can color it with your Stampin' Blend. So I love that. Also these adorable glow in the dark bats and ghosts, and they really do glow in the dark. I just did a tutorial last night that is part of my ordering special. If you place an order with me during the month of September, you will get access to a PDF file with 13 different ideas using all brand new catalog, mini catalog products. My project used this suite. So I showed how these glow in the dark because it was dark out last night and they're super fun. And those aren't to be um, outdone. Buy some glow in the dark paper. This is a six by six pack of glow in the dark paper. There are eight six by six sheets in here. And this also glows in the dark. Super, super cool, right? Okay, the products that we're gonna be using for this card today, along with the Bag of Bones bundle, includes Memento Black ink, Basic Gray ink. We might do a little blending brush. I've got the Stitched Shapes, or I'm sorry, the Stylish Shapes dies. We're gonna be using the largest circle out of there. I've got the Adhesive Backed Sparkle Gems. I just thought that either the black ones or these copper ones would look really good with our color combination here. I've got the Baker's Twine Essential Pack. This comes with five rolls of Baker's Twine. I also brought out my Wink of Stella. Not sure if we're gonna use it or not, but it's here just in case we want to. Basic tools, bone folder, our paper snips, liquid glue, take your pick tool, and regular and mini dimensionals. The other thing we're gonna be using is window sheets. Now our window sheets are very, very high quality. They come in 12 by 12 sheets. You get two in a pack for $5. And believe me, they go a long ways. This is what I really wanted to show you. This is the Them Bones 12 by 12 designer series paper. And it comes with a whole page. You get two of each of these, by the way, 12 by 12. Um, a whole page of these little panels that are fun to work with and some Boo Eek paper. The skeletons and the cats, the dogs, and the skeletons fit the dies in the Bag of Bone die set. A nice, um, I think that's called herringbone. We've got some tombstones here and a beautiful, beautiful checkered pattern. Here's another one of those full pages. This is great for making cards. You cut this, you can use this on your card fronts and some bats in that same pattern. We've got these cute little skeletons with bats and moons and stars, and some more bones, lots and lots of bones. This beautiful, beautiful blue. This is our uh, Orchid Oasis Starry Sky color. 
and then some more bats and moons and stars. So this technique is called floating elements and I'm super excited to be sharing this with you. I did this once before and it is so fun. So we're going to be using Cajun Craze. I almost couldn't say that, Cajun Craze. All of the dimensions for my projects can be found on my blog. Here's the blog address. Right below this video, you can open up the description and you're going to find a direct link to these projects where you'll find those dimensions, you'll find um, item codes and all the different colors and products that I use to make this card. And did I say this is part of a blog hop? I think I did. Everybody is using the same technique, the floating elements technique. So you make sure at the end of the video, there's gonna be a link up here. You can go to my blog and you're gonna find a list with little thumbnail pictures. Click on those and it'll take you through the blog hop of everybody else that did this floating technique. So four and a quarter by 11, I am going to fold that in half and burnish that edge good. This, by the way, is a Pearson mat, Stampin' Pierce mat. We sell these in my store. Um, you can only buy from me if you're in the United States. Just wanna throw that out there. We're not allowed to sell over international lines. This is printer weight paper that I tape on here, and this is what I like to use as my stamping surface. It's pretty firm, but it gives us just enough cushion to be very successful with our images. So here's our card base. I've got a basic white medium-sized envelope here and a piece of the designer series paper that's two and a half by six. I always love to decorate my envelopes. Then I've got an inside panel here. This is basic white, four by five and a quarter, and then a one inch strip that we're gonna put at the bottom. A white layer that is three and three quarters by five, and then a basic black layer that's just an eighth of an inch bigger at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. We've got some scraps here, basic gray, basic black. I've got my window sheet. And whatever shape you decide to do your floating, floating technique on, all I did was decide this was going to be the size of my floating technique image. And so I measured that and I came up with the window sheet needs to be three and a half by three and a half for me to be successful with this. So that's what that is. And then I went through my designer series paper. I picked out patterns that I thought went well together for what I wanna do here and I cut them in three and a half inch strips, which is the same size as my window sheet. And then I cut them in various widths. I've got half inch, I've got three eighths, I've got five eighths here, and I just went through and cut all of them um, in various sizes. You could cut them all the same if you wanted, it's whatever you wanna do here. But that's how I came up with what I'm going to make my card out of. Okay, so we have a few things that we need to do here, first of all. Um, I want to use the little top hat die. I need a black top hat. I also would like a gray fence. So this is basic gray, basic black. We're gonna die cut those. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've got the worn words um, embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder here. We're going to take that smaller front layer and we're going to line it up with that line right here that's on the front of our embossing folders. This helps you keep your paper in there straight. We're going to emboss that. We're going to die cut this. We're going to die cut this. Before I do that, this print of the paper with all of the skeletons on it and I cut out a little orange skeleton guy and an orange skeleton dog. And we are going to grab our mini cotton emboss machine. This little machine is great for doing things on your desktop. You don't need a lot of space for it. It comes with all the plates you need to be successful. And it will even work with our smaller um, mini embossing folders. So I'm gonna put in my plate number one and then you're gonna need both plate number two. I'm gonna put that in here. And I'm going to bring in my little skeleton guy. I've got my skeleton die. I love it when Stampin' Up! matches up the dies with the designer series paper images because you can certainly stamp this, but how easy, this doesn't get much easier, right? So I am going to 
die cut this. And I'm also, where did my little dog go? Hang on. Oh, here it is. I'm like, where did my dog go? I'm also going to die cut my little dog. So I've just got some temporary tape here. You can also use washi tape. I recommend that you put it on your, um, like your jeans, stick it on your jeans, pull it off a few times just to make sure it's not too sticky. Sometimes even temporary tape can be a little too sticky and it actually will tear your paper when you pull it off. So be mindful of that. When using this machine, I like to stagger my plates so they're not completely lined up. I just find that it works really good that way. This machine, by the way, is only available in the online store. It was a promotion um, a while back, and so it's not in any catalogs, but if you put in mini emboss and cut, mini, em, mini die cut embossing machine, you will find it in the online store. It's a great way to start out if you don't have an embossing machine because of course it's less expensive. And I really do, I really do enjoy being able to have it on my desktop. Here's our, here's our little skeleton dog. Is he not the cutest little thing ever? And then we have our skeleton. Pull this tape. I like to save this tape. I just put it on the sides of my embossing machines so that I can reuse it until it doesn't stick anymore. This is gonna pop, there we go. I just didn't want it to be too loud. Okay, we have these two elements done. I'm gonna put my dies away so I do not lose them. If you've ever done that, you know how frustrating it can be. Sometimes my um, Apple Watch, all of these dies stick to it because it's magnetic. That, I find them, I'm running around the house and there I have a die stuck to my watch. Not good. <laughs> At least it's a powerful magnet so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so we have these two elements. I'm going to die cut the other elements and emboss. I'll be right back. Okay. Here's all our little elements, and I'm just gonna lay these right over here. We're going to use this one after we put our technique layer together. So let's bring this back in here. I'm going to bring in the grid paper. This is really helpful for this technique. This comes in a giant bag. And of course, this is also available in my online store. It's called grid paper. You get a great big pad of it. Love using this. I'm just gonna use it for the grid element and putting this together. So I'm gonna fold this down so it's a little more manageable. I'm going to bring in my three and a half by three and a half inch piece of window sheet. And now I'm going to start arranging my little strips of paper. And I have to decide what do I want to start with. I think I'll start maybe with this orange one and you have the right to change your mind. We're also going to be using some type of a tape runner. I like Seal Plus, this is what I like to use. And for this one, you wanna make sure that your words are right side up. Boo eek, boo eek. There we go. <laughs> Just wanna make sure those are right side up. So I'm gonna start this one off. Let me see, I wanna line this up, make sure that's where I wanna go with this. Make sure my colors look good together. Nope, I want to separate those two. And I think that looks good. Okay, so this is the this is the way I'm gonna do this. I'm going to put this first one on. The first one, of course, is very easy. Let me get this in my frame. This works better than glue because this is a non-porous surface. It makes it a little tough to glue onto window sheets. Now you just wanna make sure you start that first one off right at the top. Now I'm gonna grab a piece of my temporary tape and I'm going to line this up on my grid paper and I'm gonna tape it down so it stays in place and doesn't wiggle around. All right, next up is our bones. And I'm going to just put that in the next spot here. And that looks like that got a little bit crooked. And we're gonna put this on here. Just gonna leave a little bit of space between the last one. Then I'll go with this one. 
And you can see I've used the bones here twice. I'm also using the other side, which I really like. There we go. Okay, so far successful, right? Oops, oops, come on, you little bugger. Just wanna make sure that I get this on here with even spacing. That doesn't look very even, does it? Pull that off. Mm, this is really, really sticky. That looks better. Okay, put this back in place. And then I'm going to go with this one. I'm just going to add a few little pieces of this because this is much wider than my paper. Here we go. I fold those little pieces over so they're not sticking out. Oops, come on. Oh, I still got that one sticking out. Hang on, there we go. Okay, and then we've got this last one. space in there. There we go. Okay, so once we get that done, that looks pretty cool, right? You can see through it. It's So that's where the floating element comes in on this. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to take this and we're going to die cut this. So hang tight. I'll bring this little machine back in. And my plates going to set this right in here. I'm going to tape this down. I don't want this moving on me. I don't want anything to happen to it. We've done that work. We want to make sure it's safe in here, right? Not going to wiggle out of the way. Now this is going to be a little bit tighter because we've got paper and that window sheet in here. There we go. Hope I didn't wiggle you guys too much. Here comes our element. Oh my goodness. Look at how fun this is, you guys. Isn't this so cool? Yeah, I love this look. And again, it's called the floating element technique. So let me get this stuff out of here. We're going to build our card now. And here comes that embossed layer. Got that done. Let's bring this all back in here. Now, when I use an embossing folder, I like to put glue all the way around the outside because it kind of, um, you know, it, it gets warpy on the edges. Is that a good word to use for that? That kind of explains it, doesn't it? Here is, doesn't that just make that white pop? I love that look. Then we're going to add this to the front of our card. I like that little pop of black in there. I just always love, whoops, always love that look. Okay, here we go. So this is my thought on the floating element. I'm gonna put this up on dimensionals because that's gonna make it look even cooler. So we've got our regular size dimensionals here. We're gonna put them right behind these images. Probably don't need this many dimensionals, but what the heck. And I'll maybe put a mini one right up here. That looks good. I like to use my take your pick tool to pop these off, the backings off of these. You slide it in at a slant and then you pull up and they will all come off just like that. <laughs> this is adorable. So here comes our element. I'm just kind of gonna put it right here on my card and then we're gonna get ready with these elements. So we've got our skeleton. I've got my little fence here that I thought would be super cute. I'm just gonna glue this right down here. Oh, I don't know where you guys are. Of 
course in the world, but I can tell you that my office is very, very hot today. I think I'm starting to glisten a little. <laughs> yeah. And then we have our dog, our little skeleton guy with his hat. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here. All these little elements, we have shoes, we have cowboy boots, we have cowboy hats in this die set. We have, let's put that down just a little bit further. Isn't that just hysterical? We have um, dress shoes, dress hats, like gangster hats. So, such a fun set of dies. Now I'm going to, yeah, oh, I don't know if I wanna put that one up there. Don't put one on the head yet until we do like a little dry fit. Put one right down here on his man parts, <laughs> on his body. How about if we cut a little sliver? And I like to use the edges of these. We can cut little slivers and use those. And that's where my bone folder, or my take your pick tool really comes in handy. You can pick these little things up that are hard to grab with your fingers. Pick them up with this little tool. This tool is in my online store. If you don't have one, gosh, you will never regret getting one, I'm gonna tell you. It is the best little tool I've ever owned. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening here. Is this where we're gonna go with this? I think it is. So we've got, I think we've got our dimensionals all in the right place. Pop this back off. I didn't mention, I don't think, that this is my online class in the month of September. I am using the Bag of Bones bundle for a whole Halloween class. Oh gosh, isn't that so cute? I'm gonna put a little dot of glue right here. We don't wanna raise his head up on dimensionals because the element is already on dimensionals. So I'm just going to put a little dot of glue there. Look at how cute he is. Oh my goodness, now we have the dog. So let's get the dimensionals on there. We don't need to do anything fancy here with dimensionals because this is a smaller element. And what I was thinking I would do with this twine, maybe if it's not too thick, is to use the black and just wrap this around the dog's neck. So let's see how that's gonna go. I'm gonna do this. Did I put a dimensional on his head? Yep. Might wanna do this beforehand. Let's see if I can use my take your pick tool to get that under there. And now we have another good use for our take your pick tool. Mm. What do you guys think? I think I like it. I think it's a good idea. I'm going to cut this off and add that just like that. I think I should be able to use a mini glue dot to make that stay in place. So again, my take your pick tool, I'm going to curl this up so it's really, really skinny and put that right across this little guy's hand. I don't think it's a bad idea to put one under his hand because we're now putting a little bit of stress on it with that leash for that crazy skeleton dog. So I'm gonna put one right under there. There we go. I wanna make sure there's a little slack in this. All the fun things, right? All the fun things. There we go. We have covered up our mini glue dot. I'm gonna grab my ribbon scissors here, cut that. Going to cut this. Oh, <laughs> so fun. Sometimes cards just make me giddy. I think this is one of them. 
I have these fabulous embellishments. I like to cut a slit in the side of my embellishments so that I don't have to keep opening up that flap. So I'll just close that back up and now I can just pull these right out. Isn't that a great idea? All right, I think I wanted to use these copper. Let's see, let's see how these look. Oh yeah, kind of goes along with the orange in here, I think. How about right here? And how about another one right over here? What do you guys think? That's so cute, I love this. I actually, this is the first time I'm making this card. I was kind of like, had an idea in my head and just went with it. And I thought I could just make this card without making a sample. And that went pretty darn good, right? Okay, next we have our inside layer. I wanna do just a little bit of stamping on here. Oh, I forgot to do the blending brush on this layer, darn it. So here's what I was gonna do, you guys. Where'd my blending brush go? Do you guys see it here somewhere? Here it is, I put it over here. I wanted to do a little bit of gray blending around here. I wonder if I can do that now. Ugh, I hate to ruin this whole card. Let me show you what I was talking about. Just to put a little bit of, um, I don't know, kind of spooky on the edges. Can I do that? I think I'm gonna leave it alone, but that's a good idea. You guys try it. Uh, here comes our Memento Black Ink. I'm gonna say, no bones about it, you're a sweet friend. Oh, that turned out great. Oh, it's on the side that I did that though. We're gonna do it on the other side. I hope I can stamp all this straighter. We're gonna have to cut, grab another piece of cardstock. Okay, that turned out good. And then, Happy Halloween. One more thing, keep your fingers crossed. It's We're not out of the woods yet, folks. I'm gonna do a couple little bats here. Oh my gosh, isn't that so cute? Remember our strip of DSP, we're gonna add this to the bottom. I really like this plaid paper. It's very pretty. It's very fallish. Oh, this is so cute. And you guys watch this video, I am actually going to be in Las Vegas at the Stampin' Up! Backstage event for leaders. We are at a training in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Super excited about that, provided we can get out of here with the hurricane coming. By the time you guys watch this, that'll be over and you guys will know exactly whether it actually turned into anything, if there was some flash flooding and flights got canceled all over the country or not. I wish I had a crystal ball to know if I should just sleep in in the morning instead of jumping on a flight because of course this is pre-recorded and I'm making this video before I leave on the 21st of August. It's so weird when you pre-record this far in advance because like, what do you even talk to people about? I always like to talk to people in my videos, and I'm so far ahead right now because I had to be. <laughs> it's very unusual for me, not going to lie. Okay, you guys, check this cutie patootie out. Oh, my goodness, I love this. Ah, I'm so happy with this. Floating technique, floating element technique. Um, try this out. You can see how that looks like it's floating because of the window sheet under it. Window sheets, again, you get 12 by 12, um, two sheets in a pack. They're fabulous. This whole suite of products will not be available until September 6th. And again, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Please um, pop me an email at kelly at stampabub.com to get a copy of the catalogs. I'll also give you a link to my online store where you can see everything. There's online exclusive products there too, like the little mini embossing machine that is so fun. So 
This is a blog hop. Click right up here. That's going to take you to my blog. The online store is there. All the details, dimensions, for, and all the details of the products that I use for this project are there. Plus the links to join the blog hop. The Totally Techniques design team is a team I've been on for a very long time. I love techniques. This is right up my alley and you're going to find some very cool ideas using the floating element technique. Go check it out. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. I really appreciate it. Have yourselves a great weekend. Bye-bye.